Postgres, one needs MongoDB and Elasticsearch. And if I shut down a container, those things go down with it. They have their own PPAs, so I can install, you know, the nightly version of something in one container and not affect what version is installed in another container. Uh, for doing app development in multiple projects, it's amazing and the performance is it's native. You, you don't notice that it's running on your disk using the yeah. same kernel you've already got running. It's, it's There really isn't anything that's like, oh, this is slow or, or I hit it. Yeah, and it really, um, essentially, that all the stuff that you're, all the path, the kernel path that you're going through to invoke this is mostly you're, you were traveling through it if you were not using containers, right? Um, it's all generic kernel things, and more. And so the the risk is that by enabling more and more namespace stuff, you actually slow down the, the non namespace path. But largely, it's just doing. They're just normal processes, just like you know Firefox has six different threads or ten threads or whatever. You know, they're they're just processes. Yeah. He brought up a question. He's running Mondo on on one and DB over here and something else over mm -hmm. here. How hard is it to pass information between them? Um, so you can, if I, you can actually, you can create a, a container that would share IPC, uh, you know, like IPC or file systems with a different container. Um, the tools, they definitely do allow that. I could actually share the same file system. I could bind my home into the container and then the container can see it and operate on it. Um, they all have their own network address though. So if you bring up a database server yeah. on one container, it has an IP address. So you can take your other container that has your app and point it at that IP address and it'll talk just as if you had two virtual machines on the same network. Mm -hmm. yeah. But do you have the trigger that says the database has found your answer? Now? <laughs> Huh? Well, the database has found your answer. Here it is. It's just, it's just like <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just IP, just like I SSH in there. I mean, so you can, by default, the, the things here, they're just, they look, they're as isolated as possible. But um, you can start to share more and more. I can share a file system throughout all of them. I can share, um, gosh, I can share a Unix socket, maybe? Um, I mean, just more and more things you can, you can share, you can choose to share and choose to let things go. Um, but by default, they're, they're made to not, to be more isolated. Um, you haven't partitioned your total RAM, have you? Like, no, you, you can't, right. Right, they're, they're just processes. Mm -hmm. I can limit, um, I can limit how much memory one of them would have. Um, Right, but at the at, by default again, it basically like it it doesn't um, see in nice. <coughs> You're just a container, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> This was um, this what I booted was was a uh, uh, CentOS up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, CentOS. Yeah. So now I mean. But how can that be running them in the same? You said it shares the same kernel. Shares the same kernel, and so all of it, like you, you end up having, you know, it's a NIT. that's kind of got to be made aware that it's not really a NIT, um, but you know, so the the common distributions are getting there to basically allow it to run in containers. Um, and yeah, I mean it's. I'm I'm running, for all practical purposes, just as if I had installed Ubuntu's kernel on top of the on top of a CentOS and booted it. CentOS. 
So is this running? It doesn't care. Is it in mostly RAM or or on disk? And how do you allocate? You have to allocate that. Um, well, by default, like there's a there's a file. You know, what happened here was when I created that that temp that template create a uh, when I create a new um, LXC container, it created this directory because I called it X very badly. Um, <laughs> And inside X, there's a you know that root root of S, and underneath there, there's a whole root file system. Um, there's your right there. Yeah, and then you know so you could like go look at syslog. You can go look at like the var log syslog <laughs> in the container yeah. and see that it's the container syslog has nothing to do with your outer system syslog. Where, where's all that sitting on the disk or in RAM? Yes, yeah, so on the disk. It's, it's just yeah, it's just a file system. I mean, it has you know this. This process, come on. This this process is is to Linux just a process. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent view there. Um, so you know, outside, you see that, and these are the only pids that you know. That's those are the only processes that are running inside, and there there's the top from the outside. I saw that, you know, I saw that one, that top running. Um, so, yeah, it, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get your head around, but it, it's free. Mm -hmm. So does it have access to all the files on the host system? The, the container can't get out. I can, but the outside can get in. And, and so if, so Unless all those it. files are going to go into one file on um, no, they're they're in a file system tree. So right now, in so this is here. I'm outside, right? Um, oh, okay. okay. So here I'm outside, and here's here's where the root device. That's where the root file system is. Um, so I, if I said, ah, okay, I got it. And you did an RSync copy, so it's a real copy. So it's a directory, essentially. Is yeah. What it, is. it has a, a directory. Yeah. <coughs> It's got its own file system. It's just the root of it is inside of another one. It, it's just a. Right. It's a got its own, own tree. You can edit those files, and they will only exist inside the container. It's. A, it's a it great. changes the way you do things. It's amazing. Okay. So then, if you use the truth, it's system. really no big deal. But it's, right. But most people don't. No, it's still there because it's persistent. You want to be able to bring it up and shut it down. It's and then, so I could, yeah, and so I can say. <laughs> Regular system. Well, bring your kernel down, it'll be fine. There's a delete command. Now let's say the server There. So that is inside, you know, inside. This is watching, you know, I was outside in Barleyville LXC RootFS, and I'm tailing a file called root slash foo, and inside the container, he's writing every one second to write to what he thinks is slash root slash boot, right? Um, <coughs> yeah, it, <laughs> um, so there I was going to show with, with Debian, but I actually, the CentOS is a more interesting because it's so, it's further it's off. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, so, so where would, where would I, <laughs> what would be a good use of containers? As opposed to just a virtualized, virtualized environment, they are I mean, they're significantly lighter, right? Um, and that's you know every time you do a write from a virtualization from um, from a KVM guest, it passes it passes down through the, the virtual through KVM to the host kernel to a file that's backed file and then all the way all the way back up. Um, whereas in the the container, the write is the initial write. Um, there's no, there's no, um, yeah. There's there's much fewer layers in between there. You're not. Um, it it just overall, it's it's going to be less left less overhead dramatically, but with that goes security. Um, so up until recently, um, I mean, largely people have always said. Root inside the container is 
is root outside. Nobody's made hard promises that if you gave someone a, a root process inside a container that they couldn't get out. Um, at this point, and, and, and that's probably still mostly true where most most developers would say you can probably break out. There aren't known exploits. Um, LXC as it is right now when it creates a container, there are no known exploits, but you're sharing a kernel file, so you're sharing, it, it's just kind of not expected to be as robust as you'd like. Um, but with 3.13, um, there's some, there was work gone into user namespaces. So now, rather than being, rather than root inside the container, effectively being root outside the container, um, root inside the container can just be a random user ID. And if, if you did, in fact, break out of your container, you'd then have privileges of that normal user ID. That's, that's cool. Like a great feature. Yeah, it, it's really neat. Um, so in order to do that, this is, this is on Trusty, and I mean, you'll, this will come down the pipe, and it'll be, it'll be available in 14.04 at, at release, and you can get it right now, as I'm showing, but um, I'd, I'd, I'd install CG Manager and then reboot, um, and then go ahead and walk through this. This is... So you have to reboot your server. Yeah, you had to reboot the system because, I mean, I think in the end, CG Manager will just be there, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not real familiar with why that was necessary, but um, so let's see. I don't like that it, it changes my dashes to whatever the double dash is called. And copy and paste it. Um, so these are the two steps that were necessary. Um, what this basically does is tells that. So in order to be in order to do this, I had to you know be root because I had accessing modifying the permissions for that user so that I basically own the the. UIDs and GIDs between, what is that, 100,000 and 165,536. So all those are mine. <laughs> um, and then, this one <coughs> And then, Also, I should change the number for So what I did there was basically there's, in order to, to do this, there's now one, if you're doing user namespaces um, in, in LXC, there's now one um, set UID root program. Usernet is the only set UID root program, and so in order to be root, in order to put a a NIC onto that bridge, you need to be you need to be root. So basically, what we've done is configured that the user Ubuntu can create you know ten virtual Ethernet devices on LXCPR one. Yeah, and so let's see. 
Now, so that's that I did there, and so yeah, so we don't need any pseudo, but okay, well we need a little pseudo. Um, <laughs> in the future, in the future stuff, the o ideally the OS will you know will be able, already provisioned you, your user a set of sub user IDs, and I'll, and you'll all be set up well there. But once that's done, you know, and you, I think that will eventually just disappear. Um, Copy and paste from here. This one. Yeah. Well, then I have to backslash, unbackslash the dollar signs. Mm -hmm. um. All right. So now. Look about right. So now I didn't pseudo that. And so now, instead of creating the files down var lib lxc, it's going to create them in tilde slash dot lxc. Um, and all the files, yeah, I'll show. this shouldn't take too long. That's an 80 megabyte download or so. Um, and then this will, this, if, if, we were, <laughs> if I failed to do a good job of explaining how the, uh, the processes work and the, the file systems work, then the namespace is even going to, the user namespace is even going to be more on. Um, so now, what we've got there, okay. So now in my, where did that go? There it is. <laughs> so now, instead of being in var lib lxc, they're in my user group, in my in my user's home directory. Um, and now, let's see, root. And there. Now, normally, those pit, you know, those files would be those. Well, if I normally that would look like that, right? Root, root or zero zero, but now instead, from the outside, they look like they're they're owned by it one hundred thousand. Um, ah, nice. Never crash those. No. Um, I just got that error the other day. I'm trying to know what it was. Um, it might not have helped that I did it with pseudo first. No, that shouldn't hurt. So those, all those failures you see on Ubuntu starting up are kind of basically the system not really handling the fact that it couldn't make device notes or, you know, it just, but it's not perfect yet, you know, and he, he, he kind of gets on with life, but it, so now, inside the container, I see, um, I can, you know, uh, echo foo into slash bar, Getting 
control C is, is ending up hitting the, the net, which is causing it to echo um, through into uh, I can't stop my fingers from typing sudo when I type L LXC because. <laughs> um, so now let's say. So now, inside, you know the flag for numeric UIDs? Anyone? That's bid that's owned by that. Um, yeah, so but inside that that ID is mapped, so he, he thinks um, Yeah, so I largely so that means yeah, I can like I can do operations as root that normally you need something like fake root or you know some other toy to, to do. But it's all it's all contained in the kernel. The kernel's doing the the um, mapping for me. So that is is really neat because now we've got this container, and I'm root inside. I'm root for all practical purposes inside that container. But if I were to get out, I'm just a process. It'd just be a you know same as any uh, you would. You would still gain the benefits that you know. Normally, we don't run services as root, so that they don't have a. They run them as a normal user to avoid what they can do if they did break out of the. You know, like Apache runs as nobody. Um, or Apache. Yeah. Right. Um, so go one more little thing. This is um, the Ubuntu Cloud is is another template. Um, So that um, so now instead of instead of <coughs> downloading that little the little Ubuntu one, we're actually using the same image, the same root file system that we do if you if you run an instance on Ubuntu or on Amazon or HP Cloud or Azure, it's file system level identical to what you get there. So and in doing with that, and because you did that, it's got inside of it a tool called Cloud Init, which is what people use in order to initialize their instances on Amazon. To take their generic image into something customized to their taste, and we should be able to then um, okay. So. So now, let's see, this my user data is um, just a file that, this is cloud in its syntax, it just says, you know, set the user's group password, or set the, the default user's password to password with an O, 
um, don't expire it, allow SSH password off, and then run these commands. So now I can say, um, So now when I clone that this time, ah, meant to do, yeah. Oh, there. So it is our sync. <laughs> um, user data. Do I want to do it yet? A snapshot. Um, Triple dash. Yeah, that, that snapshot, that did the overlay of that snapshot, you can see, you know, it's imaginary, it's super fast. And, and now, um, and so now, what that did was put the user data that I gave it inside of the container into a place where CloudInit would then find it. And I bet that's a cut and paste issue. He tried to run it, but it failed. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, this that Python stack traces. So um, yeah, he's saying that that stuff didn't work. But normally, what what should have happened was uh, seen something. Gosh, I got so many. What we should have seen was like a, a message that just said hello world. Um, but so that's so by using the user data and passing it in, you can essentially, you know, externally create something that will run on first boot, um, you know, and then you know start your container up. That way, you could you could build some software, write the software to a directory, and then shut the system down. And then once the LXC container is you know shut down, then you can copy you know copy the output out. Um, so by doing that, by by having a way to you know say, hey, run this code when after you've started. You can basically automate so many more things. Versus, you know, I think generally it's it's a nice thing to start a container and then log in as root and start typing things, but you know that gets old <coughs> real quick if you have to initialize your your systems that way. So that's what I tried to show there, but um, failed. <laughs> so that's that's about it. Um, Resources there. LinuxContainers.org is where the LXC <coughs> project is. Um, St. Graber. Uh, yeah, Stefan Graber is the is one of the upstreams. Oh, oh that's oh. nice. <laughs> there is. <laughs> um, uh, is he and Serge Allen, who's on my team, are the upstream maintainers of LXC. Um, we wrote a ten part, nine of ten are done um, blog post series on features of LXC, and you want to. Oh, look at it. I mean, it's it's really nice to read through it. He's done a good job of just showing some of the features. Um, and then LWN.net has got a couple different things. That one I think is on. That might be username spaces, but um, you know, there's there's a lot of data out there. Um, for you if you want to read some more. Um, I don't think I'll get into Docker, but Docker is. The word Docker, D-O-C-K-E-R, is another, if you just Google that, it's basically another interface into the same sorts of features, um, and it has become very popular. Um, so you can also put that, there's a, and that works on Ubuntu, just boot it up, start up, and, and you can start playing. Cool. That's all I got.